Imagine feeling eyes on you every moment you're inside your house. Sounds unnerving, right? Yet we can't ignore the undeniable security benefits offered by CCTV cameras guarding our homes. So here's the million dollar question. How do we harness the full power of indoor CCTV cameras without that eerie sense of being watched? Strap in because in this video, we're gonna look at what's pretty close to the perfect solution. All the benefits and none of the creep factor. Modern CCTV cameras are so much more than just CCTV cameras. Even cheap cameras now work as motion detectors, person and pet detectors, breaking glass detectors, and have real-time notifications when something interesting happens. Including all these tools in your home security system just seems like a no-brainer and it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. But even if you're an exhibitionist with no desire for personal space, having cameras in your house watching your every move is weird and creepy as fuck. Even if you're okay with it, what about the rest of your family or people visiting your home? There are obvious privacy and trust issues and the constant worry that you can't be 100% sure who's watching, especially if you're using anything cloud-based the opportunity for cameras to be compromised is always there. If none of that bothers you, then go ahead, install cameras. Maybe this isn't the video for you. How do we square this circle? We want cameras because they're great, but we don't want cameras because they're creepy. For a long time, I've thought a partial solution would be cameras that didn't obviously look like cameras. But I've struggled to find anything that would really do the job. And at the end of the day, they wouldn't really solve the underlying problem. You're still being watched in your home. And worse, you could end up recording people secretly, which is even more creepy and in some parts of the world illegal. So probably not a good idea. Recently, I came across these little Tapu C210 pan tilt cameras from TP-Link and an idea started to brew. These are far from the best cameras in the world, but they do have some interesting features. To start with, they're super cheap. I paid £24.99 for this C210. And I also have a slightly different C220 that costs £29.99. The most important feature is how they look. From the front, they look like cameras, but from the back, they look plain, certainly not like a camera. The grill maybe makes them look like small speakers. But how does that help us? Well, being a pan tilt camera, the front business end of the camera can become the back and the back can become the front. So if we could find a way for these cameras to be facing a wall when we don't need them and turn to face the room when we do need them, we'd be well on our way to a solution. That brings me to another reason I went for the Tapu cameras. They have a really good integration with Home Assistant. This integration connects directly to the camera and doesn't use the cloud. Using the integration, you can enable and disable the camera's privacy mode where it stops sending video and audio and you can also set the pan tilt state of the camera. The cameras also allow you to save the current position and give it a name. So we could set up and save a position called private where the camera is facing the wall and up and save a separate position called live where they have turned to face the room and have a good view of everything you want to see. In my setup, I don't use any of the Tapu Cloud functionality and actually have the cameras firewalled to prevent them from connecting to anything external. The only access I had to allow was NTP. Without this, they don't know what time it is when they power up. Cameras work great without any internet access, including the Tapu app, as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network. For recording footage and doing motion and object detection, I connect the cameras to Frigate. This is a relatively new, but truly awesome NVR system that can take footage from almost any IP camera and monitor it for interesting events. Its standout feature for my use case is its tight integration with Home Assistant. As well as making the camera feeds and captured events available, it uses MQTT to expose what it's seen to Home Assistant, creating devices that represent things like motion detection, occupancy sensors, and object counts. For example, when your camera sees a person, there's a person occupancy sensor that will toggle on, and it will toggle off again when there's no person in the scene. It also has a person count that will tell you how many people the camera can currently see. To tie all these bits together, I've created a virtual switch in Home Assistant 
that I've called indoor camera privacy mode. When this is enabled, a Home Assistant automation turns each configured camera to the pre-configured privacy position, so it's facing a wall, then tells Frigate to stop recording and detecting anything. It then enables the camera's built-in privacy feature, stopping the camera from sending any audio or video. When you switch off the indoor camera privacy mode, all that happens in reverse and the camera spins around to face the room and starts recording. It would be a royal pain in the butt to have to do all that manually, so inside Home Assistant, I created another automation that automatically disables privacy mode when my alarm system is activated. That means that the cameras are automatically on and recording and detecting the presence of people only when we're out of the house or in bed sleeping. Because my alarm is integrated with Home Assistant, this setup also allows me to add the person occupancy sensors that are created by Frigate for each camera to my alarm system to act as really fancy cat-proof motion sensors. At least I thought they were cat-proof. While testing this setup, my cat managed to find a workaround. I'd set up the cameras on my printer here in the lounge facing the TV, and my stupid cat managed to jump up on the sofa while we were out, landed on the remote, and switched on the TV. I'm assuming this was an accident, but maybe she's not as stupid as she looks and regularly watches TV when we're not home. The camera proceeded to see people on the TV and triggered my alarm system. So make a mental note, if you create a setup like this, avoid pointing the cameras at the TV, or at least keep the remote control out of reach of the cat. I hope you agree a setup like this is an almost perfect solution to have all the benefits of CCTV in your home without being too creepy. It has one downside, its complexity to set up. None of it's particularly hard, but there are lots of bits that need to work together. You could probably get a lot of the benefits if you had a simple pan tilt camera that could move to a preset position on a schedule. Then you could have them in their live position and recording when you know you'll be at work or asleep, for example. Not as good, but much simpler to set up. This is really just an overview that shows what's possible and how I'm implementing this in my house. I have some more video ideas that could dive more deeply into the different components and how they all link together. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to mash that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. In the meantime, for more from me, check out this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.